guys, happy Friday. This video today is an important one to me. And a lot of you will need to hear this over time. So if you are watching this, we may have sent you a link to this to watch this video to help break down um, this scenario here. So here's the deal. I got a, um, someone wrote a comment. It was uh, some video we were talking about, you know, shooting on your property. And sometimes people could hear that I'm a little jaded when this subject matter comes up. And it's not that I mean to be, but, and someone kind of wrote in the YouTube comments, I can't remember who, who you were, but I, I know you're a regular viewer. And uh, it was kind of to the effect of, hey, you know, you're gonna get a lot of people that ask this given the nature of what your business is. And I'm like, I get it. And it's not that, and the reality is we can help you buy land to build on and have your shooting range fantasy and all that kind of stuff. We can help you do that. The reality is I do not invest a lot of time and resources into most of these requests. And it's always kind of a struggle to, to tell people why and like why this is so difficult. Because the truth is, like I said, we can help you do this, but there's a lot of complexity to it. And this is kind of the, probably the best breakdown of why it's complicated that I've come up with to date. So let's break it down. As mentioned, we get a lot of requests to the essence of I'm looking to acquire some, some land or a property. Usually if someone says I want to buy property, that means land, not a home. This is, you know, just the way it is. And I want to be able to shoot and like last week, I want to build a barn dominium. Uh, yeah, no. I want to build a barn dominium and shoot on my property. And um, <laughs> in, in that particular request, I want it to be close to Austin, Texas. I was like, how much fucking money do you have, dude? Um, and so let's break down why this is complex. And the reason, just so you guys understand, if you existed in a profession where 99 times out of 100, a particular question or request led to nothing other than a waste of your time, you would have to scale back how much investment you made into those requests because you know you have about a 1% chance of anything good coming from it. Well, that's where we're at. So let me give you the breakdown. Three reasons why land to buy and build and shoot on and all that kind of stuff is tricky. Number one, money. It all comes, to, not all, it largely comes down to money, guys. In almost every case, deals of this nature are not deals that you can finance, okay? You can buy a land, finance it, and build a home on it. That would be called a construction loan. A construction loan is basically just the Cliff Notes version. I'm buying land and you can, you're can. you only gonna get a construction loan if it's like, look, you have a home designed and there's been architects involved and all that kind of stuff. Like you've been through it. It's not like a concept. You've been through it. No, get your stupid dog nose out of here. Um, so that is a construction loan. A lot loan would be you're gonna buy land and at some point you're gonna build you're going to pay a higher interest rate um, and you're going to have monthly payments on it, but you could do lot loans. But that's for residential stuff. If you're talking about buying land, that's just like hybrid of some sort of like, I'm going to build a fucking barn and like shoot on it and ride majestic four wheelers through the forest and shit. Like in almost every case, you are not going to be financing that. You have to pay cash for it. Now, in my experience, most people's budget, when I ask them, what's your budget for this? $50,000 to $200,000, okay? That's kind of a broad range, but that's a pretty decent, you know, ballpark of what most people's budget is for land like this. Most people do not have that amount of cash, so they're talking about financing it, at which point I'm like, look, I'm gonna kick you over to a lender. If they tell me, yeah, they can finance this, they can make it happen, okay, cool. Maybe we'll entertain it. Here's why this is a problem. Man, dog nose is flying through the air, getting up in the nose today. So here's the problem with your fifty to two hundred thousand dollar piece of land. The there's simply not that much profit in it for whoever's taking on the job of finding you this piece of land, right? Let's just say it's a hundred thousand, right? Let's just kind of go in the middle. It's a hundred thousand. Cool. If if the agent was being paid like a full three percent, which these days is borderline generous, which is sad, um, it's three thousand. Okay, so they've got three thousand gross commission that they're going to make. And it's important that you understand that gross commission that they're going to make. Because look, guys, 
I know everyone thinks that all real estate agents are just rolling in dough and everything. And, and you hear what the, the gross check is and you're like, oh, that's dope. You made three grand or whatever it is. Well, no, I didn't because they have brokerage fees that I got to take out. Most people have a split with their brokerage that oversees them. So it might be 70, 30, right? So you go, cool, 30% of that, let's just call it a third, is gone right off the top, right? So now I'm making like two grand instead of three grand. Look, for, for me, we do like really cool client gifts for people. So you go, cool, there goes a few hundred bucks and they might have a transaction coordinator. They got to pay yada, 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 right? So they, they averaged out and they're like, okay, cool. I'm actually going to walk with about 50% of that. So you go, okay, what do I have? On a $200,000 piece of land, what gross commission might be six. It's probably closer to five because people are just getting their commission slashed these days. So you go five grand. I take out all this shit. You go, yeah, I might make three grand on that. Three grand is not that much. I know that sounds like a lot of money and it is. Three Gs is three Gs, but it's not based on number two, which is, that. not to mention guys, you have to understand from our perspective on the finance side, if we're sending a deal, if we go, okay, cool, you come to us and we're gonna help you kind of piece this thing together and ultimately it's gonna be this agent who actually lives in North Carolina helping you with this, cool, we're taking a referral fee on that too. So that's another thing that's getting taken out of that gross commission. So number two is proximity. Most of the time when you're talking about buying this land that's kind of recreational and a little bit kind of off-grid-ish and everyone of course wants water on this property which further adds to the complexity which spoiler alert is point number three but point number two is proximity you're talking about land that frequently is not close to populated areas right if you said hey there's this city Austin, Texas, we'll just use, use that case there. Where someone's like, hey, I want it to be within driving distance to Austin. Okay, first of all, when he, and he was like, that could be an hour. And he's, he's like, you know, as long as it's within a couple hours. Okay, cool. Well, the reality is there's not many agents that live like two hours the direction that you're talking about going from Austin. No, 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 they're all based around Austin, right? So you're talking about an agent who's gonna go, any time that we need to go look at this, you know, potential house, piece of land, whatever it is, it's like up to an hour, two hours to get there to go look at it for half an hour and then spend a couple hours coming back. That's, I mean, that's a solid, that's half of my day, right? So the proximity thing is a big issue because we're talking about now stack these things together. I'm not going to make much money and I'm going to have to drive my ass off to the middle of nowhere to even look at anything. That's a problem for me, right? That, that's a problem. Number three is the sheer complexity of the thing which is you're, you're looking for land that is so specific because I'm telling you, you, people get very specific on what they're looking for and it's got to be with it like no power lines close and it's got to have a backstop for a shooting range and it's got to have water on it. And you're just like, dude, I, I mean, you're describing something out of Bambi. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you're describing something out of a Disney movie, this paradise that where it's just like a, a river flows through it and there's this perfect shooting range on it and you can build this awesome log cabin thing it's just like man you're talking about shit that doesn't like it just doesn't really exist that much so you're talking about very complex things and the other problem is because everyone's big thing is they want to be able to shoot on it well is it going to be zoned for that i, I mean because that's the other wild card look at you know, there's nothing that's really zoned to be able to shoot. You know, it's not like a thing where we look it up and we're like, yeah, it's zoned to be able to shoot on it. it might be zoned recreational. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can shoot on it. So now we're talking about potential rezoning, you having to deal with, with permitting departments at the county, city, whatever it may be. So guys, let's start to think about this, right? Why do I get so kind of, you know, just a, a little bit frustrated with the constant request? One, because no one's really thought through it. No one's actually thought through it. They, they, like, they have this dream one night and I get an email the next morning. Well, that's not a plan. That's a, that's a fantasy. That's a, a, an actual dream that you had that now is, is getting presented to me. But there's not much money in it for anyone involved, okay? And call it what it is. Everyone's time has value. So there's not much money in it. The proximity to go look at any of this shit is significant. And three, it's very complex. You're just stacking complexities on top of each other with zoning and water and yada, 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 right? So we start getting into this such narrow bubble where it's like, even if 200 grand to you sounds like a great budget to do this, it's like, maybe, but is it worth the time on our end, the agent end? Is it actually worth the time? And that's why we will get direct with people and people probably think we're an asshole about this 
It's like, we're, we're not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to shit it on your dreams. I'm trying to get you to understand it's very complex. The odds of you succeeding at this are very low and you're gonna have to get real straight with me about who, what, when, where, why, right? The main one being the money. Where is the money coming from and how much money do we have for this? So we have to stack this stuff together. We can help you do it. With enough money, you can do just about anything on planet Earth. Ask the eccentric billionaires. They can do pretty much whatever the hell they want, right? But when you're like, you know, I work at whatever for, for UPS, you know, and I make 60 Gs a year and I'm going to go have this off-grid fantasy, like, bro, bro, I mean, we got to have a heart-to-heart -heart here, you know, over email. We don't need to do this on a phone call. So I get it. I'm the villain. I'm the villain. Everyone can hate me, but... I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. And uh, sometimes that can be a rude awakening for clients, but that's also why you come to us. You don't come to us because we're here to pat you on the, we'll pat you on the back when you need to be patted on the back, but we're gonna slap you around a little when you need to be slapped around, guys. So I hope you're doing well. Um, the videos this week were uh, very spicy and I part of me apologizes, but part of me is also like, these are things that you need to hear because most people don't want to be the bad cop and I'm fairly comfortable being the bad cop in life. I will end on good news. If anyone noticed this, this might be just, and that you, you know, you can go ahead and tune off if you're not interested in this. This was like kind of my unicorn thing here. So this is, uh, so high West, I live in Utah and hopefully I didn't just screw up my microphone there, crispy. Um, I live in, uh, Utah high West is kind of like our main, uh, Utah distillery and they do this limited edition thing every year. Uh, I always butcher the name of it. A Midwinter Night's Dram. Just a fantastic name. This stuff is like super desirable, very hard to get. Fortunately, I live local. So it's like the one time in Utah that I can actually go and get awesome booze. And let me tell you, it's good. The retail price on those bottles is a hundred. And um, man, they're going on the aftermarket for like 330 to 400 right now. It's crazy, man. Like bourbon, for those of you guys that don't know, it's just like shoes or anything else. When you have a limited edition thing, you can go buy that at retail if you can find it. But man, the secondary market is a bitch to navigate. And those things are like three to four X markup right now. So if you can find one, especially at a good deal, do it. Please don't message me because I live an hour from uh, High West and I'm not going to drive up there for you. So enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the weekend, guys. Um, sorry for the spice, but you know, is what it is. See ya.